opening scenes show operation of the GS-class locomotives in the Nevada desert east of Reno. On the mail, the Gold Coast, and also cab forwards returning from helper duties on Donner Pass. In 1930, a refinement of the highly successful 4300 Mountain Class 482 was ordered from Baldwin. A four-wheel trailing truck was added to allow a bigger firebox, and boiler pressure was increased from 210 to 250 pounds. The tractive effort went to 62,000 pounds, and a booster was added to the trailing truck. These were the first Southern Pacific locomotives to have cylinders and frame cast as a single integral unit. Fourteen were ordered. Four became the 700 class 484s of the Texas and New Orleans or cotton belt route. The other 10 were numbered 4400 to 4409 and sent to California. Thus began the world famous GS class of locomotives of the Southern Pacific Railway. Here, two versions of the Overland Limited are compared. First in Nevada in the 40s in gray, then leaving Oakland behind Alco PAs in the 60s. A Sacramento local. The GS-1s were not streamlined and referred to as general service locomotives. The six GS-2s ordered in 1936 from Lima for the first daylight train, numbers 4410 to 4415, were essentially the same engine, streamlined with colorful skirts and skyline casing, and the headlight mounted in the smoke box cover. Their drivers were the same 73 inches, Boiler pressure and tractive effort remained the same. But these engines, although held to 75 miles an hour, were geared to an incredible 106. They were the largest streamlined locomotives in the world. The next four scenes are from the same fan trip shown in our GS6, Daylight Across the Sierra. Management now called the GS series the Golden State Locomotives. Their extra power was designed to take the new 12-car northbound daylight over the 2.2% Cuesta grade at San Luis Obispo without assistance. This is the southbound Lark, normally a coastline train, which has been detoured down the valley, arriving Mojave in the early morning. Here's the San Joaquin Daylight, leaving Bakersfield northbound. It is followed by the city of San Francisco westbound, arriving Bakersfield as the second section of the San Joaquin Daylight. The California Zephyr will follow shortly as the third section. Storms of furious intensity bore down on California in January 1952. On the 11th, slides closed the Western Pacific Line through the Feather River Canyon. Two days later, heavy snow shut the SP's Donner Pass Line. Both the California Zephyr and the city of San Francisco were detoured down the valley and over Tehachapi Pass. They continued east of Barstow and then north to Salt Lake on the Union Pacific, an extra 300 miles. The SP Coast Line and the Soledad Canyon Line shut down on January 16th. On that day, all the coast and valley passenger trains went down the valley, over Tehachapi, east on the Santa Fe to Barstow, and back to L.A. via Cajon Pass and San Bernardino.
success of the first coast daylights between Los Angeles and San Francisco is now legend. From their inauguration in 1937, they were a complete sellout. The trains lengthened and a second heavyweight section was added. In less than five months, they carried 100,000 passengers. The SP promptly ordered 14 more GS engines. These with 280 pound boiler pressure and 80 inch drivers. At the same time, they ordered two complete new 14 car trains from Poland. With the exception of one shot of the fast mail, the remainder of the picture is devoted to the coast daylight southbound between San Francisco and San Luis Obispo. This is the train being turned at 3rd and Townsend. Part of the new order displaced the first six locomotives, and the remainder were assigned to the new daylight train, which arrived in 1940. The new train became the morning daylight, and a new service, the noon daylight, was started with the original equipment. As World War II approached, the traffic grew and grew. Trains lengthened. The stage was set for the crowning achievement of the GS series, the GS4. Boiler pressure went to 300 pounds. Tractive effort to 78,000 pounds. A nickel steel boiler, an all-weather enclosed cab, and the first dual headlights were specified. Two orders were entered. The first in 1940 for 20, numbers 4430 to 4449. The second in 1942 for eight, numbers 4450 to 4459. The GS-5 class, also ordered in 1942, consisted of only two engines, identical except for roll of barracks. The daylight trains had many innovations. Huge five-foot windows, foam rubber reclining seats that rotated a full circle, tight lock couplers, fold-in steps, electric brakes that slowed the train from the rear first so as to eliminate slack action, air conditioning, radio and heavy soundproofing in every car. But their most unusual feature was the articulation of the cars. This feature helped the train negotiate the tight radius curves of the coastline. Where two cars joined, they shared a common truck. Each of the six two-car sets could be coupled and uncoupled like ordinary cars. All this for an initial fare of $4, L.A. to Frisco may sound like a small amount, but the Daylights made more money than any other daytime train in history. Receipts from the tavern car alone paid all crew costs. The final run of the Coast Daylight behind steam was made on January 7, 1955. From then on, the train was handled by three 2,000 horsepower Alco PAs. 